My name is Randy Knippel. I'm recently retired from uh, GIS manager at Dakota County in Minnesota. Uh, and I'm just going to introduce this whole notion of comparing U.S. National Grid to other options with a quick overview of the U.S. National Grid, just so we're all on the same page. And this is just some materials that I've had that I've used previously. Uh, the U.S. National Grid is a national standards, has been a national standard since 2001. It's been adopted by several federal agencies, Federal Emergency Management Agency, Department of Homeland Security, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and the United States Geological Survey. It's also been adopted by several states. It is, in fact, synonymous with the Military Grid Referencing System, or MGRS, which was developed in World War II, um, really to uh, be able to have more accurate locations uh, transferred from forward operating or forward observation post back to artillery firing positions. It was adopted by all NATO forces, continues to be used by all NATO forces, which means that it's also uh, used by the, uh, by the National Guard in every state. It is, in fact, a convenient notation for UTM coordinates, Universe Transverse Mercator coordinates, which have been around since the 1940s, and they have an accuracy of plus or minus one meter uh, anywhere in the world. So um, it's, an, it's an important foundation. Um, it's, it uses a rectangular grid and you simply read right then up. So your, your coordinates um, are defined by the X or the Easting of 75 and the Northing or Y of 56. And it references a grid square. So the lower left corner uses grid 7556, which represents that square by its lower left corner. Um, and we can um, apply those coordinates, those grid coordinates to varying degrees So and at different um, scales. So on the right, we can see a one to 24,000 scale map. And uh, we reference that entire map as map 75 using its lower left corner. And then the uh, grid square becomes seven, four, five, six using the grids that are labeled on the, uh, on the bottom and on the, on the left. And then that may be a larger scale map. On that map then we also have a grid and we can simply add another digit to represent a higher degree of precision. So seven, four, one, five, six, five references the lower left corner of grid one, five on map seven, four, five, six. And then we can go further. We can add another digit, now approximate within that grid square, assuming 10 divisions you know, with, within each direction, add a digit 74135658, then represents that location on this map. Um, this is all a part of a national system. Um, here we can see the uh, the grid zones, you can see 14T, 15T, 16T, and so on. And then there are, uh, um, an, there's another grid overlaid using alphabetic notation, which are the 100,000 meter squares of UTM. And we'll see some examples of that. But you can see, again, this is simply rows and columns. So you have a row of M, a row of N, a row of P. And then you can see the other way, a, col or a I'm sorry, a column of L column of N, column of N, and then a row of L looking at the second character, M, N, P, Q, R, and so on. Um, these are, these represent UTM coordinates that you can find on the USGS topo maps. Um, the USGS topo series is available for the entire US. These are seven and a half by seven, seven and a half minute quadrangles, typically referred to as quad maps one to 24,000 scale. They are also geo PDFs and they include layers. So you can see an air photo or you can turn that layer off and you can turn on uh, 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 10 foot contours. And those are available for the entire US. And these all conform to the US national grid standard with UTM coordinates. So if we look at the US NG coordinate format in a little more detail, a full US national grid designation looks like this, 15 characters. 15T is the grid zone designation. VK is that 100,000 meter square. And then the remainder, 89134, 64387 uh, is the coordinate portion. And here you can see how that relates to the UTM coordinates. 
So the UTM quarters would be 15 north and then 489,134, 4,964,387. And you can see this 89134 corresponds to 89134, 64387 corresponds to 64387. So the first part is the grid zone. Second part is the 100,000 meter square. The last, the last is then uh, the easting or X coordinate and the northing or right coordinate uh, or a, a Y coordinate, the right and up, however you want to think of that. And uh, that, cor that numeric portion is always in meters with values from zero to 99,999. So we're looking at a little more detail again, the full U.S. national grid designation. We can start to see some of the advantages of using this system. So we can um, represent the level of precision by simply truncating the digits on the right. And so as we saw in those other maps, um, if we want, if, if we use four digits in X and Y, we're representing a 10 meter square, a precision of 10 meters. So 89136438, would be the lower left corner of a 10 meter square effectively. Um, and then with six digits, we're representing a, a 100 meters of precision. With four digits, we're representing 1000 meters of precision. So you can immediately see some, some uh, advantages here because you have less digits to represent less precision. You can choose the precision that's necessary in your application um, or um, it, it can also represent the degree of accuracy that you have for your location. Um, and then we can do local truncation as well. If we know the 100,000 meters square that we're working in, and it's always the same, we don't need to keep saying it over and over again. And so we can simply, once, once every, everybody knows that we're working in 15 TVK or Victor Kilo, then we can simply leave that off and simply refer to the numeric portion, grid 89136438 a grid 8964, which automatically then also applies to precision. So what are some alternatives? Well, UTM, uh, we can, it, it, the, the U.S. National Grid is based on UTM, but we have to use all coordinates and there's no uh, uh, really representation of, of precision um, in those coordinates. You're always specifying it to full one meter of precision. Um, you can use local systems. There are many other coordinate systems that are that are used in uh, for mapping purposes. Each one has their own their own uh, uh, purpose and uh, advantages. Um, we have state plane coordinates in Minnesota. We have three state plane coordinates, and so you have to say if you're using Minnesota Central, Minnesota South, Minnesota North, that needs to be known. We can use a local coordinate system. Every county in Minnesota has its own coordinate system, which gives us very accurate measurements um, on the ground uh, in uh, in uh, for engineering purposes. Oops. Um, and then we can use latitude, longitude. And uh, the problem with latitude, longitude, longitude is there are several different formats. So we can have degrees, minutes, seconds, degrees, minutes, decimal minutes, de degrees, decimal degrees. If we're using degrees, minutes, seconds, we need to make sure if we're relaying this location by, by voice or over radio, we need to make sure that we specify every single character in that string. You have to say 44 degrees, 49 minutes, 58 decimal one seconds north. If you leave any of that out, or if you don't make it clear what you're specifying, um, somebody may interpret that wrong. And that's where you hear some of these stories about people getting lost because somebody relays a bunch of, a bunch of numbers uh, and uh, don't really specify which format they're using. And it gets interpreted as something completely different and it can make a difference of up to uh, 50 miles. And it's very critical. So what about that long? Well, first of all, first of all, um, how big is the degree? Um, and the answer is it varies. The Earth is round. At the equator, a degree of latitude and degree of longitude is approximately 69 miles. Um, however, as you travel away from the equator, lines of or degrees of longitude get smaller. And so in Minnesota, the degree of longitude is approximately 50 miles. The degree of latitude is still approximately 69. And uh, when you finally get to the poles, the lines of longitude converge. Um, so it gets smaller and smaller as you go north. 
Um, and distance calculations are difficult. Certainly, you can find calculators and websites that uh, can give you a distance between two uh, locations in latitude and longitude, but it's difficult to visualize. Um, whereas with the U.S. National Grid, we're talking about meters all the time, and so it's much easier to visualize, and we know that because it's using a transverse Mercator projection, which basically flattens out the surface of the, of the round Earth, uh, we can know that we're always working with at least one meter of accuracy in all of our measurements. Well, the U.S. National Grid has been adopted by the uh, Land Search, uh, the National Search and Rescue Committee, NSARC. It's in the Land Search and Rescue Addendum. You can see here, it, they show for different applications, which different system you should use. And now, while I spec specified the, the issues with latitude launched because of the different formats, you will see that they have designated degrees, minutes, decimal minutes explicitly as the standard for uh, search and rescue. Um, however, it does specify that land search and rescue will use the U.S. National Grid as the primary location referencing system. Secondarily, it will use degrees, minutes, decimal minutes. Now you will notice that aeronautical search and rescue responders have the opposite. Primary is still latitude, longitude, secondary is, is U.S. National Grid. However, in the notes, it further specifies that aeronautical resources that are supporting a, a ground operation will use the primary location referencing system of the ground force, which is the U.S. National Grid. Hey, Randy, if, uh, if I can interrupt for just a minute, this Please, is Jules. Jules. That last thing you mentioned, the land SAR, sir, or the uh, aeronautical SAR servicing the, uh, the land uh, user, uh, is the argument that uh, I used uh, to to convince the Defense Department uh, uh, a few years ago to include the reference uh, and to in fact uh, put into the uh, into the Chief of Staff uh, uh, what I call it uh, the Chief of Staff instructions on the use of uh, geo referencing that uh, they would in fact have to use a uh, military grid reference system uh, whenever they're servicing, when the aircraft are servicing uh, uh, tactical users on the ground, because uh, what we found uh, time and time again was the airborne, uh, I call them round earth navigators that fly over our distances and use lat long. When they got into the tactical environment, uh, the guys on the ground were using MGRS, which is uh, uh, different and uh, and so conversions had to be made and frequently it uh, cost people's lives because uh, they weren't uh, always uh, able to make them accurately in high tempo operations and so so the the uh, JCS uh, instruction now says that uh, that you have to use uh, MGRS uh, when when servicing. Uh, users on the ground from airborne systems and and the reason and then and then that takes us to the second to the second justification which is that uh, when you're using usng or mgrs on the ground you're in a call it a flat earth environment so so it's uh, numerically consistent uh, uh, horizontally and vertically which makes it much more e much easier to to determine distances between points yeah. which is important for target location and other things too. So so for all of those reasons uh, that translate well to uh, emergency response in a, in a civil environment, uh, the U.S. national grid is superior to, uh, to lat long and nearly all flat earth uh, conditions, which local conditions tend to be. Exactly. Because there are a lot of parallels between military operations and emergency management response operations of course but yeah i like the uh uh, the, uh calling it a flat a flat earth uh um, um scenario so um, that's really what it's all about and that's that's what sci the science of mapping is all about and that's why we have uh, coordinate projections and these are well established um and uh, solve um the, the the problems just as you described okay well then to get to the the discussion of some of these other um uh, options. Uh, you know, I have to really give credit to BJ 
who, uh, who, who gave me a good spreadsheet um, that went through and gave a, a comparison, normalized all of the, the, the differences into a spreadsheet. And so what I want to do is just go through each of those. Now, we do have the U.S. National Grid, MGRS, UTM. And for, for the most part, they are synonymous. Now, U, USNG and MGRS are a convenient notation for UTM coordinates, but it's essentially the same location. It's just a different notation. And the U.S. National Grid is the military grid referencing system. We can debate. There are some subtleties like U.S. National Grid will allow a space between the different components and things like that. But for the most part, for all practical purposes, U.S. National Grid is the adoption of the military grid referencing system for civilian uses. Um, and then we can talk about latitude, longitude, what three words, Google Plus codes, and then um, just a bingo grid. Now, I didn't have another one that you had, Steve, but but these are the different uh, components that, that that BJ laid out for us. And I thought it was um, really pretty good, a good way of giving them a side-by-side -side comparison. Format, the provider, um, users, cost, availability of maps, availability of apps, um, navigating, um, sending locations, and um, examples were used, advantages, disadvantages, and so on. So I'm just going to step through a few of these. How much time do we have here, Steve, until three? Is that correct? You're muted. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, three o'clock. Okay. But all right, you know, we can spill a little bit depending on who, who yeah. wants to stay. Well, I can I can uh, I can take some I, I can take some liberties here because I've already gone into detail in the US National Grid MGRS. Um, but essentially it's more of a um, it's a it's a standard that's been adopted by federal agencies. Um, there is no special uh, proprietary software required or anything like that. I mean, it's really just using UTM coordinates, and it's a convenient notation for that. Um, and and then some examples. Um, um, I encourage you to look up GIS Surfer. You can do that on your own. Um, but this is a, uh, a Joseph Elfelt, who's been working with us with the U.S. National Grid, um, and he has an, an interactive map um, that he supports for a variety of purposes. Um, and you can see as you zoom in, it's showing you the, the uh, 100,000 meter squares. You zoom in now, it's showing you the grid lines. Um, it adds more grids and so on as you zoom in. Um, and then it also gives you the, the location using the location of the cursor um, as well as the center of the map. So um, that's a nice little little feature. Um, <clears throat> Esri, who uh, provides GIS software, they have a, um, a tool that you can add into your own apps that does something similar. Um, now, one of the issues that, 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 that we've been talking to them about is that they're labeling the square, which is um, a, a bit confusing, can be a bit confusing. Um, it's really labeled, you know, we have, we always have to remember that that represents the lower left corner and we like it much better when they actually label the lines, but um, um, that we would, we would hope that, that, that they would make those kind of adjustments in the future. <coughs> um, and there are others. And then of course we have usngcenter.org as well. Um, lat long, I mentioned the three different formats. That's the most critical part. It needs to be understood. The standard for search and rescue for emergency operations is degrees, minutes, decimal minutes. You should always be using that format. And that's likely, likely had a lot to do with why there were there was miscommunication on location. If they're using degrees, minutes, decimal minutes, and both sides of the equation, the, the person sending the uh, coordinates and the person receiving the coordinates need to know that that is the format and take appropriate actions to make sure that they're interpreting that properly. Um, so that most important issue with latitude longitude. By the way, that note down there uh, ought to probably ought to be moved up as a disadvantage. Uh, based on curve line. Yeah, right. Well, for sure. Yeah, it's uh not only confusion among the the uh, units, but uh, also it's not spatially uniform when you look at it on a on a normal yeah. map that people look at. Yeah, and sometimes just a thought. Sometimes we see maps where uh, they'll actually be drawing the map, treating the latitude longitude longitude as rectangular, and it creates all kinds of distortion in the maps. So yeah, um, but so Randy, I want to jump in just for a second. 
Mm -hmm. um, pass a thought to, to Mike and Julia. Um, maybe some of these little snippets are worthwhile uh, thinking about for social media posts about like, did you know, you know, like there are three different versions of latitude and longitude, that kind of, that kind of a thing for social media effort going forward. Right here, I just clicked on, uh, so Google Maps supports latitude, longitude, but it does it, um, it as decimal degrees. It'll also support degrees, minutes, seconds. I, I haven't seen that it supports de degrees, decimal minutes. Um, but if you do, if you click on the map, it, it will show you the coordinates in uh, decimal degrees. But it's important to understand the differences between those different formats. Um, then we've got this one. This is the this is what three words. And this is the one that always comes up because what three words is a private company that is selling um, software that um, that that basically assigns three words to a three meter by three meter location for any place in the world. Um, and so they have an app out there, and it's really kind of a cutesy fun thing. Um, I'll just bring it up here really quick um you can use it for free uh if you want if you want to um but what they're doing then is selling a component that will perform their interpretation to these what three words um for for in incorporation in, into uh 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 911 uh, dispatch systems and computer aid dispatch systems and things like that. So what they're trying to do is, is it's kind of like the crack dealer, get people hooked on it and force um, local jurisdictions to pay to incorporate what three words into their dispatch systems. Um, They've also got one or more car companies to buy into it, yeah. which is quite disappointing. Yes. If but I money, zoom in money far talks. enough. Yeah. If I zoom in far enough, it's actually showing those three meter by three meter squares. So now if I click on one, okay, so the location for that three meter square is branded.focal.slams. If I go to the one right next to it, it's maps.money.think. If I go to the one next to that, cycles.pushes.rank. There is absolutely no relationship in the three words for this square compared to that square and any other square in the vicinity. You have no way of knowing, given two uh, uh, sets of three words, where they are in terms of spatial relationship to each other. They could be on the opposite ends of the planet, or they could be right next to each other. There's no way to know. You have to put those words in, and you better get the right words. Again, if somebody, maybe somebody puts in trap.spout.degree, or traps.shout.degree. And that's going to get you to an entirely different place. I don't. <laughs> yeah, Randy, it's purpose. Excuse me for butting in. I'm not a proponent of what three words, but it is purposely designed that way so that to avoid um, a mistake. So. Right. But here I just showed the difference between traps.shout.degree and traps.spout.degree. Two entirely different locations, two entirely different three meter squares. I have no idea where they were in relation to each other. So it's a cutesy little thing. Plus, there's there's no concept of that uh, that idea of a, of a precision. Um, you know, you're always talking about a three meter by three meter square. Um, so so it's proprietary. Um, it is being adopted in car in uh, uh, automobile man, na uh, navigation systems. Been adopted by these countries: Mongolia, Dubai, Europe, um, and it's basically just a marketing scheme to get us hooked onto using this thing. Would have thought the Germans would have been smarter than that. Well, it's, you a pretty, Mercedes, it's, but, a pretty, uh, it's a pretty smart algorithm that does this, I guess, but it it, it requires their proprietary algorithm and their proprietary software I, to be I, able to do it. I call it a boutique, I don't see, boutique I don't, system. Yeah, I don't see a point, honestly. Anybody have any other thoughts or comments on this, what three words? It's one of the 
ones that keeps coming up because people just think it's so innovative. And I think it's nothing but trouble. I've never heard of it before now. Don't even. <laughs> oh, well. No. Please, please forget about it after please this. Please forget about it. As you heard <laughs> about. No, I, I, this is okay. Bernard. No, I don't think we can forget about it. I think I it's know. insidious. I think they are making a big effort to get into the U.S. Uh, market. You know, the emergency yes. market. Well, yes. and it really makes it very important that we we do a good job of marketing USNG so to keep. To keep it right. out, to keep it but limited. We're, but You're we're, right, fight, we're we're fighting against um, you know, a, a for-profit company that is spending money on marketing this thing. And right. Really, so we've got to be smarter. We've yeah. got to we've got to with no money, we've got to do a better job. <laughs> right. This is like postmodernism applied to maps. Correct. Yeah. So the, the the thing that I think is really nasty about what three words is they aggressively um, market to the emergency response community. And if you don't know what you're doing in that realm, it's easy to get suckered off, yeah. if you will. Exactly. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Next is the Google Plus codes. And this one's even worse because it's similar as proprietary. Uh, the, the plus codes uh, really have, have no relationship to each other. They're always going to be some, some finite location, um, but they just don't have any kind of a relationship to each other or any, any obvious relationship to each other or uh, any other kind of system. Um, so if we just look at an example here, uh, Google Maps addresses for everyone, free, simple to use, open source. So, you know, here you go. I mean, I, you know, I guess the, the, the beginning part before the plus will be consistent. And then you've got two, two characters, numeric or alpha, alpha or numeric um, that gets you to a discrete location within that 97 MF. So, you know, I guess if you've got a, if you don't have any other way of, of defining addresses, maybe that works. Um, but um, it's still unique um, for Google, and um, it really doesn't help you in terms of doing the measuring or you know even looking at uh, those uh, the alpha alphanumeric portion. Um, there really isn't any kind of a relationship um, or uh, any, any kind of a concept of a of a of a rectangular grid. Well, yeah. the other the other thing I would chime in with on on the thing with plus codes is they're very aggressive in in the idea that they've released this as open source, but what they forget to tell you is that it only works with Google Maps. So you're 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 forced into the Google Maps world. Yeah. So you you can see actually that the after the plus it is doing rows and columns. So it is doing rows of um, alpha alpha numeric, and then it's or, or, and then a column of alphabetic. So there is some kind of a relationship there. Um, and we've uh, we've tried for years to get into Google and to get them to uh, to put the grid, the U.S. National Grid, on their maps, and and they've said uh, we've talked to people. I know uh, some of our guys that that they've uh, they've acknowledged the value, the utility of U.S. National Grid, all the way down to you know ten meter to one meter locations and in areas like that picture you showed. Uh, that yeah. would, uh, USNG would work, or or the Brazilian equivalent of it would work just as well down there. Uh, but uh, yeah. but now all of a sudden, I hadn't heard of Google Plus codes, so they may have figured out a way to monetize it because again, you can't make money off the U.S. National Grid 
uh, the way you can a proprietary system if you can actually market it. But again, it's not useful. Yeah, you know, I, I, I've, I've looked at, I just, as Bernard jumping in here again, um, I just wanted to say that my understanding of Google Plus Codes is that it is based on uh, lat long decimal degrees. And uh, it's just taking the decimals and chopping them up in a logical way. What's funny is this MP, the using the uh, uh, characters, you know, the uh, A to Z and uh, one to nine, whatever the digits uh, uh, for the codes, and it makes it look kind of weird. But um, it is actually uh, just like. Uh, we're based on UTM. U.S. National Grid is a, a simplification of, of UTM. Theirs is a quote-unquote simplification of uh, decimal degrees. Uh, I, I, and I, I'm not sure about how proprietary it is because it, it is supposedly open source. And I think that if somebody wanted to make a their own maps with the plus codes, um one could do that of course that would be that would help google by the way yeah. i note that square isn't uniform either that you and, just showed yeah well that makes me think that well, it is it, it is based it's that, on because lat it's based on lat long uh yeah. and if they chop it if you take a look at the yeah. specs they yep. chop it up in, in quite a, a a creative and interesting way but in order to yeah. squeeze the code make the code as short as possible but again, I would say this is maybe this is again a a a, a competitor, a, a a dangerous competitor for the emergency uh, market, and we need to just do a good job in marketing our own to uh, make sure to keep this out or to to so it's yeah. in second place and not first place. I, I believe Google Earth. Does does support um, U.S. National Grid or NGRS to some degree, but I believe you have to use the full 15 characters to be able to get it. Well, it's um, not in, not intuitive anyway. Right. I mean, it's not not presented right there for you. you okay, the last go. one is just uh, what we typically refer to. Yeah, this is one we typically refer to as a bingo grid. And this is when somebody just makes a grid and labels it in one direction alphabetically and the other other direction numerically. So they just start with A and label from left to right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then uh, and then lab label from uh, you know vertically, um, starting with one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Um, the problem with this is that um, you you there's really no relationship to anything in the real world. Uh, you know you'd have to pick something that is, is the increment um, based on whatever kind of coordinate system you're using. So you could say that you're making a 10 meter UTM grid and then you're just labeling it arbitrarily ABC in one direction and one, two, three in the other direction. The problem that you run into is uh, what happens if your area of operation now expands to the west or to the south? And now, now you have to do uh, double A, double B, double C, or you use minus one, minus two, minus three, or your entire numbering scheme changes because now you, your area of operation has changed. So um, it's just, it's not advisable, but <laughs> unfortunately it is being used. Um, in ArcGIS, you can do something called a reference grid and you can do exactly that. They uh, give you a great tool that lets you do that. And when I went out and looked, just did a Google search and I found search and rescue methods. And this is in Kentucky. And here they're describing just exactly that. Areas will then get labeled, such as A, B, C, B, one, two, three, four. And then that's how you break up your search area. Well, unless Why? you have some Why? way of relating that to the real world or to GPS, it really doesn't make much sense. And NASA did the same thing when they mapped the uh, Challenger <laughs> debris field, I think, before they they got uh, instructions. It happened, it happened in Minnesota when the 35W bridge collapsed. 
They did the yeah. same thing. Isn't this uh, what the Thomas Matt books used to do? I mean, yep. if you need to widen your search, you just have to buy the next Thomas Matt book for the adjacent area. Yeah. And besides widening well, the search and having to figure out new new uh, numbers and letters, the biggest problem I've seen with that is when you have new partners entering into your response. For example, yeah. uh, during the Pagami fire, uh, which in, in northern Minnesota, which at the time was the fastest moving fire in the nation, uh, the Forest Service came in and, and used a bingo grid for their response. And and when our local responders were on the ground, the Forest Service was asking our ambulance and rescue folks to respond, and they they were we didn't have those maps. And so the the big disadvantage of those to me is that everybody needs that map. And how does everybody get it? Because in the field or your local responders, you're probably just Xeroxing copies of maps and handing them out. Yeah. And that's ridiculous. Well, the thing is, they've got the right idea. <laughs> if they just knew about the national grid, it's doing exactly this, but it's doing it in a in a uniform, yeah. standardized way for the entire nation. And during that particular fire, which was located in the county where I was the emergency management director at the time, uh, they changed <laughs> at my request from Right. Bingo grid to national grid. Yeah. And that was very, very helpful. Great. Well, this, bing this bingo grid thing is the exact scenario that Talbot always used to talk about what yeah. he ran into when they did the mapping for Katrina. Is yeah. that they they created an area they thought no hurricane could exceed. And what did it do? <laughs> it was like twice the size <laughs> off of each edge of the bingo grid. So. All right, just a couple other thoughts then. Um, so mobile app, the U.S. National Grid is supported on numerous mo mobile apps. If you just download a mobile app for Jeep that uses GPS on your phone, um, look in the settings. There will be multiple options for, for uh, displaying the coordinates. And uh, if they don't have USNG, they may very well have MGRS. And just remember, they are synonymous. Um, and uh, most, most GPS systems now will have MGRS um, and, and many are now including USNG as well. Um, there is another app called Benza PDF Maps. You can get any of the USGS uh, topo quads uh, downloaded for free on, on your smartphone and then it will actually work even if you lose uh, internet connection. Um, you can still bring up your map and your GPS will still work. And you can actually locate yourself on uh, on the map. And um, so we'll find like in Minnesota, the uh, all state parks are uh, provided as uh, G as as geo PDF maps. And those are all available for free. I know a lot of other um, uh, uh, states are, are providing their maps, their public uh, maps for the public uh, uh, sites, as well as national parks. Um, they're all all available for free on the Benza PDF Maps library, and uh, and then one of the settings in PDF Maps is USNG. Um, also relates then to these emergency location markers. So again, what we're getting is consistency from maps to GPS to now being able to uh, publish locations on signs in parks that relates to GPS. Um, so having things that are consistent, people aren't just creating something. And uh, as Steve said earlier, you don't need electricity to do this, <laughs> you know. And and we just know, you know, that you know we because of the truncation, you know, that if we're in at nine three three four seven nine, the numbers to the right aren't as significant, and we can probably hear somebody screaming by the time we get that close. And then, and that's from usngapp.org. And then, of course, we've got usngcenter.org supporting all this as well. There are a number of other sites out there, um, either for uh, military study or for backcountry trekking on how to read maps, how to navigate using maps. Even if they don't say U.S. National Grid, they're giving the instruction on how to use the military grid and how to navigate and measure using UTM coordinates and it all applies to the U.S. National Grid. Um, and Iowa Task Force One has adopted this. They've created a number of training videos that are available um, on their YouTube channel. And that's all I have.
Randy, that was the best 15 minutes I've ever heard. <laughs> well, yeah, Bravo. Time. That's that a long great. 15 minutes. Because we're over time. Um, yeah. I just wanted to mention a couple of things, if, if we still have time, Steve. I, I think we let it run. We'll just let it play out however it comes Okay, up. people can leave and know when they have to. But yeah. you mentioned apps like Avenza apps, maps. And uh, there are many other mapping apps, of course, like Gaia and, and Outdoor Active, which is becoming more popular. Outdoor yeah. Active uh, does not support USNG. And I, I wrote wow. them and I said, asked them to do that. And they said, yeah, we've heard that before and we're considering that for future. But I wrote that, you know, they, they, haven't, they haven't done it yet. So that's... Uh, as you mentioned, you want to make sure that the app you're using supports USNG. And then the other one is uh, the comment about um, cell uh, formats. So I was at a uh, review of a, an incident in Minnesota recently and talking about different grids. And the incident uh, commander was using something that he called uh, cell phone coordinates. <laughs> and I said, what's a cell phone coordinate? And and he said, well, he, he didn't know what it was. He just showed me his phone and said, well, this is it. And I said, yeah, those are decimal degrees, lat long decimal degrees. And that's not the standard. And it, you, you don't even know what it is. <laughs> you know? How do you, how do you explain that to someone else? And so I think that's, uh, and yeah, that was very interesting to me that this person who was very uh, active in search and rescue used that term that I had never even heard of. So that's another thing coming up that, uh, you know, people are using cell phones and cell, that is the most cell phones, as far as I know, iPhones and Androids, that's their default location format is, is light long in decimal degrees. So that's something we want to be aware of and let people know about. And the other thing is uh, one, the other problem I find with uh, even decimal degrees or any other lat long format is that nobody knows how many digits to use for precision. And uh, so we've had coordinates where we're looking for a canoe, for example, from the air, and they and we'll get we'll get GPS coordinates in lat long, and they'll have like 14 digits each, you know, easting and northing. And uh, I figured out one time that they were measuring down to half an inch. <laughs> and so I try to let our our responders and people on the ground know that whatever format they're using in lat long, whether it's decimal degrees, decimal minutes, or minutes, seconds, they only need six digits <laughs> for lat and six digits for long, no matter what format they're using. And that will get them in into a format that um, effectively matches USNG, you know, 10 meters, something close to that. So that's another, I think, thing that people don't know about lat long. They're yeah, you know, that's, that's something that, I mean, one of the best things that, that happened for, uh, for the, <laughs> The mapping world was uh, Google Maps because all of a sudden everybody knew how to read a map and everybody knew how to measure on a map. And, there, and then the, the worst things that ever happened was Google Maps because nobody understood all the details. And right. and you're you're putting that you're 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 putting a very sophisticated. I mean, the science science of mapping and geodesy has been around since Middle Ages, right? Um, and it's all about the science of flattening the earth and doing accurate measurements and relaying a location uh, and measuring from one location to another. And But being able to do that with some kind of understanding of the implications of the, of the, the location that, that you're providing and the system that you're using to provide it is, is very important. And so, you know, you're, you're, you're putting a very sophisticated tool in the hands of people that are, you know, lack of a better word, ignorant about that tool and what they're doing. And so that's where U.S. National Grid simplifies things and uh, you know, makes makes it something that is standardized for uh, for everybody. So everybody's using the same thing. But we're not there yet. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, like, like you said, BJ, you know, as we come across uh, some of these uh, apps and other systems that are out there, um, you know, it'd be nice. We just had a one-page, you know, white paper on why they should be embracing the U.S. National Grid. Um, so that you know, you want to, if you can actually find somebody to talk to. I mean, I, I remember um, when I came when I found uh, a, a Venza PDF Maps app. 
it was the greatest thing because we could put our parks maps out there and you know, we could put the set it to U.S. National Grid, MGRS. And then all of a sudden there was an update came out for the Venza PDF Maps app and it didn't have that anymore. <laughs> they had removed it. And I, I was able to contact them and actually talk to them. And they didn't realize the significance of that. And they thought that it was just a military thing. And so they didn't they think that it had an audience that was really worthwhile um, supporting. Um, and when when I explained the U.S. National Grid and why that was important, um, they put it back in. So I think they're willing, but you but you have to take the initiative. And it'd be nice to have um, some kind of material that, that that we could use. All we need is a contact or the name of an app and we can find a way to make to raise an awareness so, we, so that everybody isn't just kind of doing that um, haphazardly. We can do it as a coordinated effort. 2025 offers a lot of opportunity if we can get these prior, other priorities squared away. You know, we, we in other words, we got to have our, our house in order before we go on a campaign, if you will. And I'd look forward to the campaign function because I'm thinking that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Someone asked me uh, if there was a very simple, you know, eighth grade reading level uh, summary of U.S. National Grid, which your your summary was perfect, Randy, for this audience. But for someone who's not familiar with it, anyway, we've been working with the Bayfield County, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, in their search and rescue. And if you go to the Bayfield County, Wisconsin website, I think you can click on part of their menu. I don't know if you can do that, Randy, right now. But if you find um, USNG, I think is one of their mapping something. Anyway, it has just a, a short paragraphs summarizing the benefits oh, really? of USNG. And I think that's an easy one to copy and make your one page. Is that Scott uh, Galecki? It is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> is it, who said that, Maggie? Oh, yeah. 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 How far are you from Bayfield and, and or Sawyer County? I didn't catch that. Oh, you. maybe four hours. Nobody okay. goes there willingly. Well, actually they do, but <laughs> it takes so long. Yeah. But there are several counties in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is really jumping on the bandwagon in search and rescue and emergency mm. response for this. Yeah, so yeah I've been you hearing a lot blue... about Minnesota nerds that they want to bring over yeah. to our side. <laughs> yeah, thanks. On the bottom left in that blue column right there. Right there, National Grid. Click on that. And there's a very simple, those paragraphs could be just copied and pasted on any other PR material. Good. So, so Maggie, you got on the call folks from Florida, California, Maryland, Minnesota. So, and I grew up in Wisconsin. So, it isn't like we're trying the Minnesotans are trying to beat up on those poor Wisconsin folks. No, it's okay. We know you're uppity. <laughs> hey, did you know that Minnesota is the only state in the union to make half of their flag another state? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what your flag looks like. Uh, they just changed it. There's a go take a look at it. You'll get a laugh out of it. Okay, guys, great meeting. Randy, great presentation. Thank you so much. Bye, Bernard. Thanks, Bernard. Have a good day. Have a good I day, just, guys. Uh, I hey, just Bernard. brought up this NAPSIG website. I did work with NAPSIG. It's the National Alliance of NAPSIG, National Alliance of Public Safety GIS Professionals. Um, but they've got some materials out here. Um, Napsig. Yeah, Napsig. Um, so they've got some materials, um, some basic stuff. So, but yeah, I think, you know, there's the name reference back to our stuff and so on. So, um, but yeah, look, and we have done a brochure. I was trying to find that. It's, um, it's greatly, uh, it's outdated, hugely outdated. Yeah. But something like that, that's a brochure that can just be handed out. Yeah. Um, Is that like an imitation Texas flag? 
<laughs> I'm not going to go there. I'm already in enough trouble as it is. Right. Maggie, this is BJ. I, I I would look forward to working with you and ha having you in this group as a member of a tribal uh, representative. And yeah, uh, we we work with a lot of you know counties and local jurisdictions and states, but uh, we don't have a lot of tribal members uh, and tribal people supporting U.S. National Grid. So if you have interest in this, I would love to uh, maybe get your email at least or contact information and, and oh, work with sure. you on that. I see that you put something in the chat uh, about Yes Magazine. Oh, uh, a... well, it was about the Navajo. Um, oh, yeah. Navajo using that uh, coordinate um, system from Google. That oh, yes. Plus signs because I know that. They're... Oh, that's not this email. Um, during the pandemic, obviously, they had issues getting things to the right places because a lot of right. that particular section of Indian country is completely unmapped. Um, to the outside world. And um, so it it served its purpose. Um, and I had no idea up to that point that they, you know, they didn't have addresses. Apparently there's also a place in the Dakotas that has a similar issue. And it's just, I had no idea until, mm -hmm. until things happened. <laughs> Yeah, and and wilderness areas too. I mean, where, where I live, that's the largest wilderness area east of the Mississippi. And yeah, there's, you know, you got a million acres there of people wandering around without any addresses, and they get hurt and call nine one one, and then they can't tell us where they are. I've heard that in reference to the snowmobile trails in northern Wisconsin in winter as well. Now that I think about it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, I'd be interested in. Um, getting more involved, but I need to learn a little more because this isn't something I've dug into before. I've dug into 911 simply because my county contacted me. They're, they're um, what do you call it? Uh, since we have our, um, our addresses not really assigned to anything in particular they're not surveyed they'll be in a 40 and then they'll be apparently made equidistant simply due to how they like uh my words are failing um so they put equidistant and then you have everyone thinking okay well this stop is going to be 800 meters ahead um, and right instead like all four of them are at the far end or you know we, we have issues with 911 that way Mm -hmm. And um, fixing it is not as easy as one might think. It's a big job. Yeah. Maybe Randy, he can. He's retired now. He can help you with that. <laughs> sure. Yeah, here's uh, Lake County. You had something to do with this, BJ, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and that little video yeah. right there. If you click on that, it's 45 seconds, but it's a great, great uh, PR video. If you can turn the sound on yeah. too. Is it, did you hear the sound? You can't hear the no. sound. Yeah. Well, somebody go. Lake County, Minnesota. in the chat. So, Maggie, the largest install is, um, is, is probably in Cobb County, Georgia. I used uh, to live in Georgia. Yeah. And it's in, uh, it, it's the same, um, county the Brave Stadium is in. You you probably know that. Um, I was next door, I think. We we're in Fulton. Okay, there you go. So um, they've got somewhere north of, I believe it is 2,000 markers installed at this point. They're also in the Kennesaw, uh, Kennesaw Mountain National uh, Battlefield, uh, installed also at um, uh, Kennedy Space Center. Uh, the science board at uh, at the space center looked at all the alternatives and made the determination to uh, to install that way. So, um, I'm going to take things back, Randy, if that's okay with you. Yeah, I think. And yeah, I'm not, we'll, I'm not sure. we'll wrap things up. 